Oh. Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to the second episode of our Electrocraft tutorial series. This episode is going to be all about the resistor, because it's perhaps the most important part of an Electrocraft electrical grid. Um, the resistor is what will allow you to tell the system how much power to send to the various um, machines and uh, parts of your, uh, your power network. Okay, so uh, the resistor is actually very, very easy to craft. It's not very expensive. Um, all you need are two coal dust, we'll turn that off, two coal dusts, which you can get by simply putting coal in a grinder, uh, two HSLE steel ingots, and two base panels, and this will give you four resistors. It might give you less, depending on your difficulty setting. Um, okay, so now we have the resistor crafted, and it looks like this, when it's placed down. Uh, now, it's important to note which direction <coughs> Excuse me. Which direction that this goes in. So these three bands on the resistor are very important, and they have a number. There's, there's band one, band two, and band three. And band one is the one that's right up against the uh, the edge here. So this little um, blank space it is, is is after the band three. So this is band one. This is band two. And this is band three. Now it doesn't matter which way you have the resistor turn, but this is always band one, the one that's right next to the edge. So keep that in mind, remember that, because you're gonna to need to know that. Now, what the resistor does is it limits the amperage that can come through it. So the voltage is always determined by uh, the voltage source here. So this auroral battery is going to send out a certain amount of voltage. Um, the current is going to change based on our resistor settings. So you'll notice the auroral battery here, which is a creative battery, is currently set to on. So it should be outputting power, but it isn't. Um, zero voltage, zero current. That's because of our resistor and because we have it set to three black, which is its default. Now, to use the resistor, you need to know the color codes. All right, and the color codes are actually based on the real-world color codes that are used on resistors, and it actually works the same way. So, in order to use the resistor, you're going to need a couple of you need different types of dye. So, black wool is a zero represents a zero. I mean, not wool, but black dye represents a zero. Brown is one, red is two, orange is three, yellow is four, five is green, blue is six, purple is seven. Gray is 8, this is regular gray, not light gray, and white is 9. So if we come over here, if I, for example, take and put a brown dye, I'm using Greg Tech dyes for this just because I can, um, but if you didn't have anything but rotary craft and stuff, you need to use cocoa beans for this. Uh, if I was to put a brown dye on the first pin, you just right click it and it dyes it, there is currently 10 amps coming through. And the reason for this is because each one of these bands has a different function. And this is very important. So band 1, which is the one right up against the edge, will take whatever number you dye it and multiply it by 10. So we, put, we colored it uh, with brown, which is a number 1, and it multiplies it by 10, and we get 10 amps. Alright? Uh, we'll put this back. The second one is just whatever number it is, the middle one, band two. So I put, I, I dyed brand two brown, and I get one amp, all right? Now, band three is a bit different. Band three adds zeros, all right? So if I were to put a brown, if I were to color it brown, we've got 10 amps again. So you'll notice that in this example, Dying brand one brown is the same effect as dying the second two brown. That's because this one, band three, adds zeros. If I add red dye here, we have 100. Because like I said, it adds zeros. So we've added two zeros to get 100. And of course, if we were to dye it something like gray, we would add a whole lot of zeros. Come on. Oh, I guess it's not compatible with whatever gray dye I'm holding in my hand. We got it purple, we're up to 4096 current. And I think that's just because um, this thing can't take anything else. Anything higher. We'll dye everything back down to black. And that's how it works. So, 
I recommend having this written down somewhere because you might not remember it. Uh, it might, maybe eventually, if you use a lot of electric hat, you can memorize it, but I haven't, so I just have it written down. Um, and that's how it works. So what you want to do with the resistor is you, uh, if I have a machine on this induction motor, and we can grab, what kind of a machine should we grab? Um, we'll grab, well, let's just grab a grinder, it doesn't matter what machine we grab. Well, we're just grabbing a machine, and we're going to stick it on the electric motor. You want to figure out how much power you want to send, shaft power you want to send into this thing, whatever machine it is, or whatever you've got attached to your motor. And then use a resistor, which this, this voltage meter wouldn't really be here. I'd put the resistor right next to the motor in this case. And then dye this colors so that you get the uh, amount of power that you want out of it. In fact, we're going to actually go ahead and grab a dynamometer. Just because. Okay. So. Remember that we're not affecting the voltage with the resistor. The voltage is coming out of this battery, which will always output the same voltage. Um, if you were running this straight off of a, uh, it, a shaft power input, then the voltage you could adjust by adjusting the speed. Um, so we want to give this some, some power. Now we know that the grinder requires a certain amount of torque. We know that the grinder requires 128 newton meters of torque. All right, and we know that to get that value, we uh, we take our torque and we divide it by eight, and we get amps. So we want to take our amps multiplied by eight, and that gives us the torque. So we need to dye this until we get the amount of torque that we need. So you see, we have 80 torque here out of 10 amps. With 100 amps, we have 800 newton meters of torque, which means we totally get this thing working, obviously. But if we wanted to try and get closer to that 120. Um, Torque. We'd have to. Wait, I, I didn't mean to die that. I meant to die. Sometimes it's a bit finicky as to where you have to click. But we want to die this so that we can get the, the amount of amps that we want. So this we can actually keep uh, as that. So what we want to do is we have a couple of options here. Um, we could die this to get to 100, uh, and then we could use red. That would go to 200, actually. So we want to use brown to get to 100, and then two there, but it gets to 120 amps, which gives us 960 newton meters of torque. So yeah, whatever this is multiplies by eight. So if we wanted to get to 120, but you get the point. Um, the point is that you dye these bands different colors, and it gives you a different uh, amp output. So the resistors are very powerful because Here's the important part about the electric craft. We mentioned this before, but it's important to mention it again. This is not wasting energy, okay? What's happening here is not that this battery is outputting its maximum amount of output and we are limiting what's getting through and the rest is being wasted. No, remember that uh, electric craft batteries or electric craft systems in general will not output power unless power is being requested. So what's happening is that this resistor is requesting power. It's requesting 120 amps. So if you look at this wire, the point current in this wire is 120 amps. It's 120 amps all the way through because that's what's being requested. But, I got rid of it. If we were to drag out some additional uh, cable, this is weird. It's doing that weird glitch bug again, where it gives me like a ridiculously high voltage for some silly stupid reason. Don't really know why it's doing that. I shouldn't really call things glitches when it comes to Rega's stuff, but that doesn't seem right. So I can't. But um, if I was to have... Basically, let's go downstairs. I'll show you down here, because it's actually uh, set up. So remember here, this is my, um, my water room for my fusion power plant. So we've got this battery here, and it's outputting power. Now if you look at this wire here, it's out. the point current in this wire is 1,040 amps, all right? But notice what happens when we get past this resistor, which is currently requesting 130 amps. 
bang. There's only 910 amps in this cable. That's because 130 is going into this resistor. The only reason that this uh, battery is outputting uh, as much power as it is is because there's a bunch of resistors lined up here that are requesting it. And if you were to add more resistors in here, you wouldn't be reducing the amount of power in this wire. The amount of power that the battery outputs would increase to accommodate it. So it's really powerful because with these batteries, and we're going to talk about batteries in the next episode, there is no loss. They will only output what you are requesting. Now, motors always request power, which is why you should probably always use a resistor uh, for a motor. Because the motor will take as much power as the battery will give it. So I would recommend sticking resistors on it. 910. This one takes in another 130. Now there's only 780. Another 130. 650, and so on. So we go all the way around here. 520. 390. 260. 130. And finally, zero. <laughs> there's no power in these wires because this resistor took the last bit. <laughs> That's how electric craft works. You have to request power to get power, so there's no waste. Which is great, because with shaft power, you'll always be outputting the maximum. Or whatever, how, whatever, However you're producing your shaft power, it's always going to output the maximum. And it can be sometimes a bit tricky to um, even it out and send it around places uh, at the amount that you want. But with electric craft, uh, using that as, as your power grid, um, you'll be, you can put as much shaft power into uh, a generator going into some batteries as you want. And that can just be running all the time and storing up energy at power. And you're not energy, because it's, it's energy here and, and it's power when it's being used. Um, and, and then you'll only output what you are actually uh, requesting. So if I was to knock off uh, a bunch of these, um, it would request a lot less. Like, if I was to break this wire, the battery is only outputting 130 amps now, because this is all it's going to be. And that's really, really cool. So that's electric craft, and that's why resistors are very important. So take the time to learn how resistors work, because if you don't use resistors, you're really not getting the most out of electric craft. You really need to learn how these things work. So just to recap here as we as we close up, remember that the that uh, pin one band one is the one that's right next to the edge. Remember that band one multiplies the number of whatever color you uh, dye it by ten. Band two does not; it simply gives you the number that you're looking for. And band three adds zeros. So if you remember that and write it down, or because uh, it's going to be very, you're going to probably want to write it down. Then you can use resistors to totally customize your power grid. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, I don't want to go on for rambling for too long, because we do cover the important points about the resistors. Um, let, let us know in the comments if you still have questions about the resistors, because they are so important. It's so important that you uh, learn, understand how these work, because these really are very, very powerful. So um, ask questions in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them. I'm sure Reiki will post something about everything that I got wrong, but I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm right about this. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, experiment with it. There's, there's, there's. You're not gonna, you're not lose, you're gonna lose anything. All, all you have to do is just dye these different colors. So you are gonna need a decent supply of dyes uh, for electric craft. You may have to go out and find the dye that you need. But uh, yeah, that's resistors. Very, very powerful. Very important uh, for electric craft. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. So stay tuned for our next electric craft tutorial, which will be about the batteries. And um, yeah, so stay tuned for that. I'm Samuel H, and I'm signing out.